Hi everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute I.O. where you'll find bite-sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Jong and I'm an I.O. psychologist. Today we'll be covering Personnel Decisions Part 2, uh, Estimating Success Rate of Your New Assessment. Let's say your organization is considering the use of a new screening tool to select employees. And this could be any one of these. These are just, these are just examples. Personality assessment, intelligence test, bio data, and so on. The question here is how can you demonstrate the value in terms of accuracy of your new assessment? What we're going to be doing is estimating the proportion of correct decisions. I'll explain further what I mean by that of your new assessment. And we do this by mapping out um, different candidates and putting them into different quadrants here. You'll see that on the bottom x-axis, you'll see the score on the assessment or your new assessment. On the y-axis, you see the criterion score, which is the performance evaluation score. What we'll be doing is placing the, the uh, well, current employees, because we're going to be doing what's called a concurrent validation, uh, into these four quadrants, one of these four quadrants. In quadrant two, you can see that this is the expected good. These are candidates who scored high on the test and are high performers. I say candidates here, but keep in mind that because we're going to be doing a concurrent validation, we'll be using existing employees. So I should actually say employees who scored high on this test and are high performers. In quadrant four, these are expected bad. These are candidates or employees, uh, current employees who scored low on your test and are low performers. Quadrant three is unexpected bad. These are candidates or employees who scored high on the test but are low performers. Unexpected good in quadrant one represents candidates or employees who scored low on your test but are high performers. Again, we expect, because we expect employees to, who score high on the test to be high performers, this is, would be considered unexpected. Now you need two pieces of information, the criterion scores, and scores on the new assessment. For a new assessment, before you can actually employ the new assessment, what you'll want to do is to uh, gather information so that you can validate the assessment on its accuracy before you actually start employing the new assessment. One way to do this is uh, what's called, as I mentioned earlier, concurrent validation. That means that you administer the assessment to your existing employees, your current employees, the reason why you do that is because the existing employees have uh, like, are likely to have some performance evaluation data on them. And so if you were to administer the new assessment on them, you would, you would be able to obtain two pieces of information. One is their performance evaluation scores, and we, we're calling that criterion scores here. Number two is the scores on the new assessment, how they actually did on this new assessment that you're about to uh, use. Uh, so with these two pieces of information, you'll be able to estimate the correlation between the two. So here's a quick example. In this case, we won't be actually calculating a correlation coefficient, but if you were to do that, that would become what's called a concurrent validation coefficient. As an example, you'll see that the criterion scores, let's say, goes from 1 to 10. This is your performance evaluation. Uh, for your organization, and this could be 1 through 5, 1 through 7, whatever it is that your organization uses. We'll want to set a cutoff score uh, above which you would consider uh, the employee to be a high performer uh, and below which you would consider the employee to be a below average performer. In this case, we're using a score of 7 as uh, 7 or above as high performing and 7 below as uh, needing improvement. Scores on the new assessment, again, you can standardize the score to uh, go from 1 to 10, 1 to 5, whatever. It's, it's just an example here. Let's say the score goes from 1 to 10, and we're going to select a score of 7 or above on this new assessment, and consider that to be high, uh, and anything below that would be considered low. With these, these two pieces of information, you can now map your uh, employees onto this uh, create a matrix and place them into one of the four quadrants. The red line there represents, again, the criterion score. We said that was 7. Uh, we use 7 for both here. 
So red line is the performance evaluation score above which you're considering a um, high performer and below which a low performer. The blue line represents the score on the actual assessment or the, your new assessment. Again, we're using the, the value 7 here, above which you're considering them to be a high score and below which you, consider, you would consider them to be a low score. What you would then is to place the employees into these four quadrants. Uh, just to give you a quick review of the descriptions, I have that. And then here, those X's represent your employees. You can see that we have two people in quadrant one, three in quadrant two, uh, two in quadrant three, and three in quadrant four. These are the people that, uh, again, based on their score on the assessment and their performance evaluation scores, you are placing in placing them into these four quadrants. So how do you calculate the accuracy? This is a very simple formula and you can see that the new assessments accuracy is the sum of the expected count in quadrants two and four divided by the total total count, uh, total number of your employees. So if we go back to this slide here, you can see that the sum of quadrants two and four equals six. 6 divided by the total, which would be 10, that you can see here. 6 divided by 10 equals 0.6. What does this mean? 0 0.60 can be interpreted as the decision accuracy of the new assessment, uh, which is around 60%. This means that if you were to make hiring decisions based, based solely on this new assessment, you'll correctly hire those who should be hired and correctly reject those who should be rejected about 60% of the time. Now let's do a quick quiz. Uh, I switched around the, uh, the quadrants or the uh, employees in the quadrants. See if you can estimate the accuracy of a new assessment based on the following information. You have one in quadrant one, three in quadrant two, two in quadrant three, and we have four in quadrant four. So take a look at that. Remember that you will want to take the sum of quadrants, uh, employees in quadrants two and four divided by the total. We have a total of 10 employees here. So then using this simple formula, you get something like this. 0 0.70 now is our accuracy coefficient. If you got that correct, give yourself a hand. And so point 0.7 here, uh, again, very similar to what we talked about earlier, means that if you were to make hiring decisions based solely on this new assessment, you will correctly hire those who should be hired and correctly reject those who should be rejected about 70% of the time. I hope that was helpful and hope that you'll join me next time. Look for more topics and videos to come your way very soon. Thank you so much for watching.